Live Casino and Hotel. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Bob Cooney here with Andrew Salchunas. We got Tyler Zuli producing this show, making us look good. What doesn't look good, Andrew, to start off the show, and I hate to start it on a downer. Philly's canceled tonight. Yeah, that really sucks. Yeah, that's no good. So Philly's game's canceled because the Nationals had multiple, multiple, multiple positive COVID COVID tests today. Uh, you and your beautiful wife, Christy, we're going to go down to the game tonight. Yeah, I was supposed to go today. Uh, now I'm not. And if only, uh, if only there was a way to prevent this. Um, yeah, wouldn't that be cool? That would be really cool. But apparently, yeah. you know, it's not there yet. No, it, it's a personal choice. But there's a lot of people here with Phillies jerseys, Phillies hats. I assume, guys, we're going to go to the game. Yeah, it's disappointing. Tonight, yeah, I feel bad for Everyone them. gets screwed out. You know what the good thing is, though? As soon as we get off these microphones at 7 o'clock, Andrew and I are going to let you all buy us beers. Yes. Here at Live Casino and, and Hotel. And now I don't have to go to the game. No, you do not have to go to the game. I may, have my, go. Wife's, I may have my wife's dinner in the car. No, yeah, so you but pack... she can wait a little bit. So you pack the bag to come down to the game tonight from Wawa? Yes, I'm a, I'm a Wawa. Okay, you take your clear plastic bag. How does it work? Because I've never As long as you, it, it. it's the Wawa bag and they're, they're okay. Oh, they're so good with it. Bring the Wawa bag with the food, the unopened open water. Everything's got to be unopened. Right. So, you know what I mean? So yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a move that I suggest people have it. I, and I suggest it also. It's a good move by you. So you will go home a little bit after we're done here and have your nice Wawa dinner with yeah, your it's wife. Yeah, going to be romantic. We're going to light a candy. I think you should watch some Olympics <laughs> instead of watching the Phillies. Well, I can't watch the Phillies. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, you watch There's the Olympics something. instead. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's good news that you're not watching the Phillies tonight. No, Zach Wheeler's supposed to start. Yeah, that's They're going to win this game. So the deal is they have said they are postponing this until tomorrow where they're scheduling to play a doubleheader at noon. Yeah, I saw 12.05 scheduled the first pitch, so it'll be a seven-inning doubleheader. And I'll just go down after work and get there because people have spent their hard money. I mean, I feel 
feel bad. I don't feel bad for Nationals fans because I don't like the Nationals, but I do feel bad for those who took the trip up. Sure. And now what? I feel bad for all these people that are sitting in here, although they're lucky to be at Live Casino Hotel because it is so cool to be here. But there's a bunch of people here that I think made the trip down and only found out when they got close to the stadium. Yeah, but you know what, Bob? At least it's Live Casino. Like it is, and it's beers with Bob, and they can hang out with us and talk some sports and listen to some sports and maybe have a couple of beers because that's what we're all about. We're about beers with Bob from 6 to 7 on Wednesday nights. Live Casino Hotel is nice enough to have us down here. Uh, we're right here by the main bar, uh, hanging out, and just come on down. I mean, if you're on your way to the game and you just got pissed off because you heard this game is canceled, we have reason to celebrate. Yeah, and you're, you're probably stuck in 76, you're stuck on 95, you're coming over the wall with it. You might as well not just turn around. You made the trip, come on, see us. Absolutely. I'll have a beer with you. After the show. So Andrew and I were preparing for the show, and we sat at the bar and had a soda each. Yes. And our girl, Chantel, took care of us. Yes, she did. Yeah, she got us a soda, found out we were doing the show here, was very excited, said she's going to hold down the fort until we get over there. We got guys sitting right in front of us that are ready to have beers with us after the show. So it's all going to be good. This is what we do on Wednesday nights, Andrew. Yes. We do beers with Bob. All we ask you to do is to sit back, grab your favorite cocktail, have some fun. Realize that the end of the week is coming. The hard part of the week is over. Thursday and Friday are the best parts of the week. Tomorrow you listen to the John Kincaid show from 6 to 10. Then you listen to Andrew and Anthony from 10 to 2. Mike Missanelli after that. It's an easy week. The week is almost over. And like I said to my parents, like my parents said to each other rather, every night around this time when they were having their martinis, Andrew, happy Wednesday. That's what they said. Happy Wednesday. Happy Bobby. Wednesday. I think we're having some problems back there. But I want to say cheers here to everybody because we are just having such a good time here down at Live Casino and Hotel. Phillies game is canceled, so uh, that's something that you have to make adjustments for. If you're on 76 right now or coming from wherever on the Walt Whitman Bridge, Ben Franklin, don't turn around. You already slotted about four hours out for tonight anyway. Exactly. Just come on down to Live Casino and Hotel. Have a beer with us. Hang out. We'll, we're only here until 7 o'clock. We'll talk about the different sports things that are going on around the world. And after we're done at 7 o'clock, we have the smooth, smooth sounding Devon Givens that will take you through to the rest and, of the night. And Bob, I'll, I'll put out an olive branch to uh, the Nationals fans because I will say this. Not only can you hang out here, you know, watch some great games that are happening that didn't get screwed out of because of the uh, COVID issues, and you have a great food, great beer here, you might as well get a room. You can stay at the live casino. Hotel. Yes, you can. And you know what, Bob? What? I'm so pumped. Guess what I'm doing this weekend? Let me see. All right. How old are you now? 27? 27, yeah. I'm still, I'm still hanging around. So let's see. Still hanging around. So you're 27 years old. I would say, not knowing what you have this weekend, I would say it's some kind of a huge party type thing with friends. Uh, yeah, pretty big. It's my buddy's bachelor party. Oh, perfect. So he was, I had I had co-best men because I couldn't pick, pick between them. Well, like you're Jack. so popular yeah, too. No, it's because I love them both dearly. But uh, it's my buddy Jack's bachelor party. He's getting married this September. So Way to go, Jack. Do it. So we're doing the bachelor party. And you know what? I've been here for what? Four broadcasts now. Yes. I was here for a Phillies tailgate one. So I've now been here five times work related. But I've also been here a few times non work related because I go to the Phillies games often. So sure. I usually come here before, hang out. Have some or I fun. come on over afterward because it is a great place to be before the Phillies games. It's a great place to be after the Phillies game. I'm sure it's a great place before and after Sixers, Flyers, and Eagles. Sure. Games. We're going to be staying here. I actually booked us two rooms, because there's a couple of us, two rooms for Friday and Saturday night to hang out here at Live Casino Hotel. That's how great this place is, that I don't want to leave you. Quite frankly, Bob, I kind of want to book a room right now so I can stay here tonight. But I'm so fired up Friday and Saturday, Live Casino and Hotel, I will be here hanging out. Man. That is an awesome, awesome night, and thanks to the people at Live Casino and Hotel for making that happen. Last week... Last week I was so, because we have been here a few times, but I hadn't seen the hotel part. So on our way out, I had my family here last week. On the way out, we decided to take a look over there because 
on FanFest 2021, which is September 8th at, La at, at, I'm sorry, at Xfinity Live, but the after party over here at Live Hotel and Casino, yes. we, I believe, because it's an after party where we're going to be here all day and all night, I believe a lot of 97.5 The Fanatic people will be staying here at Live with Helen Casino no, I will be. to hang out. You I, are already, you've already set wife. your rooms. I already told the wife, we got to figure out a place for the dog, make sure the dog's comfortable with somebody, if people are staying at our house, but we are going to be here at oh the host fan fest for the after party, and then after the after party, and then after the after after party. So there's going to be a lot of parties, I imagine. I, I do I have to ask you, I have to ask you a question. What's that, Bob? So, FanFest is on Saturday, September 18th. Right. It, I believe it starts at 1 o'clock and tickets are readily available. Uh, we will have ticket drops. We will give out tickets to anybody that calls. Hell, if you come over to us sitting here right now to, uh, uh, tonight at Live Casino and Hotel, we will, get, we will promise you tickets. Just yeah. give us your email address, Jonathan. And we will promise you tickets. So, you need a ticket to get in. But the Sunday after... Fan fest. It's an early, it's a it's a tough day for most of us. Why is that? Are, are you going to be on the air with one Jamie Lynch at nine a.m.? No. Really? Bobby you planned Bobby. ahead? No. Because it's football season, Bobby. Oh, and damn, we will that's have right. a fanatic pregame show <laughs> and I am not a part of. But so I the other suckers have to be on that. Show, so okay. I get to sleep up until one o'clock kickoff, and then I get to watch the game, and then do post game, and hopefully by 7.30, 8 o'clock, when we typically start post game, I'm oh, sorry, 4, 4.30. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. should be recovered by then. Right. Yeah, no doubt about it. So, don't forget about it. Fan Fest, Pat Egan had the best line that if you want to go to Fan Fest, you can go. You know, you, you just got to get a ticket. Who? Uh, Pat So, three weeks ago, yeah. so it's I know, I keep Last I just keep going back. All I know is and I will tell you it was I who said the line. It wasn't I, it was me. It was me. Yeah. That's well, you know, I, that was my business for a while, so I have to make sure we get that straight. I do not like to give Pat Egan credit, so I will take that out of my mind. I will give I all the credit due to you. We all we all know. Do you want to take it? He may have he may have quoted you on that. So, all right, so the big story tonight is the Phillies game having been canceled. Uh, multiple COVID-19 issues with the Washington Nationals. And it's also weird down in that area today, Baltimore Ravens starting quarterback Lamar Jackson could not be on the field because he tested positive. He has tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, Eagles had their first uh, practice at training camp today. Howie Roseman was talked to after that and said that 90% of the team has been vaccinated. They've been vaccinated or at least got their first shots. So that means they're going to be done sometime soon, which is, listen, I get it. I know. It's, it's, a, it's, it's like a, a it's, carousel. Yeah, it's not, it's not fun to talk about. I am pro-vaccine. Simmons for load management, Tobias Harris for benefit of load management, any star in the NBA for I paid my harder money to see Kawhi Leonard play, but Kawhi Leonard only played 50 games out of the 82. Load management. That is based off of sports science, and they think that they need to take days off. People are missing games because they are on the COVID reserve list, even if they don't test positive, but it's only because they were in contact tracing with somebody who tested positive. The only reason why you're in there is because you're not, you did not get vaccinated, right? Right. But it hurts the team. Yeah. So I get the your body, your choice. I'm not going to debate anyone at this point, all right? Because if, if you feel a certain type of way, you, I don't think you're going to change. No, your mind's not going to be changed. You're, you're not going to be changed, okay? So Bailey Falter and Aaron Nola and players on the Phillies that have had to go on the COVID injured list because they weren't, they weren't vaccinated, but somebody around them tested positive. All right, their minds are not going to change. But I can tell you that Aaron Nola hurt the team when he had to miss his start and they had to go with the bullpen route against the Red Sox. Sure. They won the game. But, yeah. but whatever. You, you get what I'm saying. Yeah. When it comes to football, 
I would imagine a lot of Eagles fans, vaccinated or not, pro or anti, right, are probably happy that 90% of the team is vaccinated because that means there's a stronger chance that they will not be forfeiting games. Forfeiting games, Bob. If there's a stronger chance for you to be on the field to do pretty much anything, most athletes would say they're going to do it. Yes. Now, this has become an issue of, of choice. Uh, like you said, we understand it. You are your own body, and yes. we, you, no one can tell you what to do. I'm not force anybody to do it. There's also ramifications there, but it's, it, it is. It's a, it's a different thing. It's a head-scratching thing. Uh, Cole Beasley coming out saying all the stuff that he's saying about it. It's just different. And, you know, one of the things you have to also look at, Andrew, is you get vaccinated, I get vaccinated, other teammates, other people at the Fanatic get vaccinated for the fact that we want to try to keep everyone around us healthy also, yes. right? I don't do it just for me. I do it for, obviously for my family first and foremost, and I do it for the people I work with. I try to keep everybody as safe as possible. When you have a clubhouse, a locker room, whatever you want to call it, and guys are making personal choices and maybe putting you in danger, I wonder if there is division among a locker room. I, you wonder if those things come into play. This season, with, with reporters not being able to be in locker rooms because we're still overcoming all of this, I don't know what the inside stories are. I don't know if maybe there is some division in the, in the Phillies locker room among players. I, I don't know the exact percentage, but it's, it's a surprisingly high percentage of players that have chosen not to get the best. Right, and, and from a locker room level, right? And we're all Phillies fans, right? It's not like, it's not like I'm not a fan of Aaron Miller because he didn't get that. But I can't help but think, D.D. Gregorius, who has killed wore a damn mask on the field. Yeah. Last year. Yes. Right, because of how concerned he was for his own health. Why did Therese wear a mask on the field this year because he was concerned for his own health? And then maybe there is a debate because some aren't. And then their answers are because I don't want one. Like Aaron Nolan was asked about it and he didn't give a logical answer. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, Carson Wentz got asked about it today and said it's a personal choice. It is. It is a personal choice. Understand. Now we just got a text or a tweet here from Matt Will. Positive tests on vaccinated players. What's the difference, dudes? They still can't play. Entire thing is a joke. Throw this segment in the back backstory. Okay, you want to bury your head in the sand about what's going on in the world? That's fine, Matt. Go ahead and do that. Uh, you know, if you don't want to take a, 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 a stance on, on maybe how it should be handled or you want to handle yourself, that's fine. Whatever. Whatever you want to do. I, I'm not... You do you. Yeah, you do you. I, I you know, I, I think if you read more into it than your yo do, both positive, vaccinated people and non-vaccinated are testing positive. Okay. L look what the numbers are around the country of people that aren't vaccinated that are in the hospitals now because of COVID. I believe the last I saw it was 98. So, I, look, I'm not telling anybody what to do. You can have your own beliefs, non-beliefs, whatever. It's affecting so many people. I, I don't know. Line up 50 scientists to me that know so much more than us. I'm being honest here. Line them up. If they say, if, if 48 or 45 to 50 say, yeah, it's better to get it, why, why wouldn't you think about it? So, who knows? It, it's a personal choice. It's going to be a debate forever. It's, it's what divides this country. And... It, it, it's a, it's a shame. I'm not telling anybody what to do. Uh, hopefully you do what you see best, not only for yourself, but for your family, for others. And, and uh, you know, right now we're just seeing this uptick everywhere. And, um, you know, football is going to be interesting because, look, Trey Turner last night got a single, scored on a home run, and they had to pull him from the game and isolate him. That's a guy that stood on first base. You know, if I'm Reese Hoskins... You're wondering if he hasn't, even if he has gotten vaccinated, that's, you know, to, to the guy that just tweeted his point. Even if he has gotten vaccinated, you got to find out, you get tested every morning. Um, football, you're on top of each other. You're all over each other. There's no hiding from anyone on a football field. So the fact that a Lamar Jackson, a quarterback who stands in a huddle, who throws, licks his fingers, throws balls to guys, you know, whatever, it's, it's we're getting back to that real sticky situation. And... It's a shame. It's, it really is a shame. 
I wish there was more of a concrete answer that everyone would believe in, but this is where we are right now. Yes, where we're at. And bottom line, I know it sucks. The Phillies games are postponed today. And I'm not on the side of, oh, well, they can come home. Yeah, it sucks. I mean, people made the trip. Yeah. I was I was parking here live. I looked over. There were people already getting ready to go into the ballpark. Yeah. Yeah, they started, they started breaking down the batting cage. I want to say somewhere around 5 o'clock. That yeah. was a telltale sign. Well, Jim Salisbury, I saw, tweeted that the Phillies did do batting practice. That's the case. Right. And I think Washington was about to was when they stopped. Yeah. And the grounds crew came out and started cleaning up. And that, that was, a, like I said, a telltale sign. Now, tomorrow, saying that they might try to get a doubleheader in starting at 12. You have weather coming in tomorrow. Severe, severe storms coming in, which is going to bring along a, a nice cool front. Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday look beautiful, 80 degrees, not a, a lot of humidity. I don't know if you're going to be able to fit in even a seven inning game tomorrow, let alone a doubleheader, let alone if Washington's going to be able to fit a team, you know, uh, put a team on the field. Um, it's just the sign of the times you get doing. It's 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 a shame. It, yeah. it sucks. It sucked last year. We hope to all work together and, and get this resolved. We seem to be on the way, um, but it's just not happening. Right? It sucks. Not only with the weather, I saw someone saying there would have been a chance they played. The advantage Phillies, and, and you want the games to be played if Washington, you hate to say it, but if Washington's going to be a disadvantage with limited players, with minor league players having to come up and fill in, you'll probably have Zach Wheeler going in the first game. It's a seven-inning game. It's realistic to assume that he's going to pitch a complete game for you there. Oh, yeah, I would take the Phillies. We're here at the live, live this year hotel, Phantom Sportsbook. I would take the Phillies game. Yeah, and, and, and hoping that he goes a full setting, saves a bullpen, you know, well, buys right. some time for all those, I don't want to say dead arms, but all those maybe not good well, arms. Well, game two is Vince Velasquez, right? Yeah. Seven in the game, nine in the game. Vince Velasquez might only go to three. So you need to have the bullpen ready. And if it's a seven in the game, I would almost manage it if I'm Joe Girardi, where Vince Velasquez has a very short leash. Sure. And the second, because you're, you're, you're at a point right now in the season where you need to win every game with the and this is a series where you should win because the Astros are champions. They're trying to trade everybody away. So the Phillies need to win. I, I can't go with a split against the Astros heading into the trade deadline. I want three or four. Now Scherzer was originally scheduled to go tomorrow. There's rumors he's going to get traded. It looks like to teams that he wants to, West Coast mostly. Yep. I would be shocked. I said it on the morning on the John Kincaid show this morning that I'd be shocked if they threw Scherzer out on the mound tomorrow, even if they haven't traded him yet because does he want to go out there and risk anything? Well, he already has to be tweaked. So oh, he does? Okay. I didn't. I had to see that report. He tweaked something, which is why he might miss a start. But I think it's more so just to uh, excuse the light of the last game's So if there's any chance at all that the Phillies could get two in, it would be very advantageous to them to try to uh, pick up some, some ground on the New York Mets. Uh, we'll talk about the embarrassment what yesterday was for this Phillies organization, on and off the field, mostly off the field. But they have some issues going on, as well as the Nationals. It's it's Beers with Bob tonight. It's Bob Cooney, Andrew Salchunas, Tyler Zuli back at the studio. We are at Live Casino and Hotel. Come on down. Good crowd hanging out here now. And if you were planning on going down to the Phillies game tonight and are just finding out that the game was canceled, we're right across the street. Yes. We're at Darien and Packer. Like, this is the place to be. It's a great, great spot. You can park upstairs. My outline for free. Now the game's canceled. Maybe for free. Tell them. It should be for free. It's canceled. It's canceled. Come on in. Hang out. We have a bar right in front of us. You can get some good eats, good food. we got definitely tons and tons of sports action going on all over the place. So come on down and visit us. But right now, i got to tell you, that you've got to see this place. I'm telling you, Live Casino and Hotel Philadelphia has changed the game here in the Philadelphia Stadium District. 
It's a world-class game destination with over 2,100 brand new slot machines, over 150 table games. They have a luxury hotel with five-star accommodations, cool bars, a world-class restaurant. Whether you're looking for a fine dining experience at the Prime Rib, or you want to experience the flavor of Guy Fieri's taco joint, or his burger joint, I love that. It's all here, truthfully, anywhere that offers a chance to place a bet with FanDuel Sportsbook while enjoying a cannoli from Termini. Also, here on site in Live Casino is a winner in my book. It's unbelievable here. Luxury hotel, gaming, bars, and restaurants in the heart of South Philly. To view upcoming events and promotions happening at Live Casino and Hotel Philadelphia, all you have to do is visit CasinoPhilly.com live. Live Casino and Hotel Philadelphia. Game on. Game on problem. Call 1-800-GAMBLE.
Andrew is doling out FanFest tickets like nobody's business. He's taking emails, he's making promises, he's got it all going on. Yeah, my man Michael just came up All right, Michael, you're in. Can't wait to see you at FanFest, brother. We're on the list and we'll get the tickets. Absolutely, no question about it. That's all it takes. We're down here at Live Casino and Hotel. We're right near the FanDuel Sportsbook, having fun. Watching people drifting in that were hoping to go to the Phillies game, but found out it was canceled. So they're coming in, having a few beers, maybe getting something to eat. It's a great place to do both. We got Rutgers football in the house. Everything's working. You got it going on. And Scott's here. Scott's here hanging out. Our, our waitress earlier tonight was Chantel. She's getting it done. Everything's good here at Live Casino and Hotel. Um, this place is I it is. Like Bob, every time I look up, right, so I've been, I've been scrolling through the phone a lot trying to see more information on the game today. And then I just look up and I just like, I see it. It's just beautiful. And it's so spacious. Spacious, beautiful, new, clean. Oh, man. Just a big deal. Did I just see a beer tower be delivered to the bar? No way. Those are some of my favorites. Sean, I know Sean loves a beer tower. Oh, I love Beer towers. Go into the bar with your boys and get the right, beer tower. All right, hold on. Bob, give, give me a challenge. Because as I said, no. as I said in the first segment, I'm very, very pumped for this weekend. It's my buddy's bachelor bar. Yes. And we're actually staying here Friday and Saturday night. Have a great time. Oh, two nights. Oh yeah, double double header, man. Wow. We're gonna be doing a lot of great stuff out in the city, but we're gonna be hanging out. A lot out of here gambling lot. here, I can uh, imagine. I'll definitely be in the sports book and hanging out in the nice leather seating and watching the game. But this place is perfect. You may fall asleep in the leather seating. I might depending on the game. Yeah. Uh, but it's been it's it's, it's so great here. So give me the challenge, Bob. Uh, over the course of Say, uh, I think we're gonna get here around six o'clock Friday just to put the bags in. Okay, right. It's we're like, gonna be doing. We're gonna be gallivanting. All right. So, but eventually we'll come back here Friday night. Sure. Saturday we'll start the day here and then also go out and also come back. Right. This is your starting and finishing point. How many towers must I have, or at least we have? We'll be four of us. Well, four of us have one beer each other. Right? How many beers are in a tower? I want to say like. Is it four? Four pints? Three, yeah, maybe? Come on, son. You should know these things. Uh, well, how do you think we should crush? Well, let's just say me, myself, and I. Mr. Grammar. What do you think yeah, I have? Uh, I don't know if it's at, if at a sitting I would be proud of myself if I killed the tower. Like I, sitting. you know me. I could. I, I love. Sit, I would love to sit around and, and. I just like drinking beer. Like I, I don't. I don't drink to get drunk. I like the taste of beer. I, I like my beers. I try. I really do. Somebody said to me last night. I must have tweeted something. I said, "How many beers in are you?" I don't drink beer during the week. Um, you know, maybe beers with Bob. We might have a beer with a with a listener, a friend after the show or whatever. But I don't drink beer during the week. But sitting around and drinking a towel. I would have to have the hotel room upstairs, yeah. Uh, I think you could kill a tower by yourself in a sitting. Or by myself, but of course they I don't, yeah, I would say you and your friends will probably kill six towers. Okay. All right, is that fair? Are you, what are you setting it at, five and a half or six and a half? I'm setting it at five is the, five. Four. You gotta give it a half. Four and a half is the line. Four and a half? Oh, it's a stone over. Yeah, is, is it, it on showing the, is five it on and the, a half I should set it at? Is it all the fans? All right, I'll do, I'll do the five and a half. We're going to get Chantel to put it up. We're going to have them post something behind the bar. So when you guys come here this weekend, you have to come to this bar. Yes. And Chantel oh, is going Chantel. to put something behind the bar that says Andrew and crew over under five and a half. Oh, you say Sean says six and a half. Oh, He's going on. high. We're also doing stuff all over the place here. All right. All right. It's a bachelor party. And you're probably going to have, it's not just the four of you for the whole bachelor party all weekend. You're going to have people meeting up with, I would assume. No, it's going to be four. Oh, that's it, the four of you. Yeah. Wow, this dude's not real popular. Huh? Four people for a bachelor party all weekend? He's got a small party. It's, it's just me and oh, it's my just buddy Jimmy and his brother. Okay, so it's just, it's just the, the wedding party. Yeah, just the wedding party. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought like that was... Because there are Art. other there are other guys from high school that are invited to the wedding. Okay, yeah, I thought maybe they would like you know, come out to meet with tight, you. Tight if you're friends with Andrew Sanchez, he needs some help this weekend. Please come to my hotel. Yeah, 
Yeah, you know, like yeah, he has rooms. There's floors and yeah. stuff like that. So that's awesome you're staying here this week. No, I, can, I can't wait. And again, it's because of how great it's been. The shows that we've done here, hanging out in the lab, myself, my cousin, my wife. I see how great this place is. Like, I can yeah, no, you'll have fun. I might even come over and visit. You should. Yeah, I think I, I, I think I might. Nah, yeah, it's, it's your bed. I can't keep you up there. Now it's you and your three friends. You're, you know, you're starting a little bit angry. You have to try to beat that. Over six and a half, it's now been set. Sean has put it up on Fandle Sportsbook. It is six and a half, the over-under on towers. Now, when you get a tower, you usually can't get a nice craft or a nice uh, IPA. It's usually no, I'm gonna have to go light. Yeah, yeah. If I'm, if and that they're I'm easier to crush. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I, I can see you guys killing. I'm not gonna go with the over six and a half. I'm gonna go the under. But I, I, I can see you ordering like what now, now, Bud Lights or I promise something like that. Now the beauty of FanDuel Sportsbook, when this is on the app, you're allowed to bet the ultimate. So if you want to bet an alternate line of five and a half, you can take care of that. Yeah, you think that's going to be posted? No. Yeah. And you can also bet in-game. So you can look at Andrew's highs in the middle <laughs> yeah. of a tower and decide whether he's going to be able to finish it or not and post the bet. The tower was just filled up in front of us. Oh, that is and amazing. Just, where where did it go? Left or right? It's on the right side. They, they moved it over. To oh, okay. And All right. It's delicious. I think that's going to drop off of one of these days. The restaurant's packed now. Yeah, it is. The we got a great happen. crowd here. Oh, yeah. it's fantastic. And the coolest thing is, I, you know, being the guys that we are, Andrew, and what we do for a living, we are sitting here at a bar. We have multiple, multiple TVs in front of us, including one that has the Olympics going, that has four different... It's the quad box. Man. It's the quad box we got going. We got golf. We have field hockey. Yeah. Um, and a couple other things that I'm not sure what the sport is. That's a big net. I don't know why that's for sport. No, they're they're pretty big. I, I would not want to be a field hockey. I've seen limited field hockey. I actually have a funny field hockey story. So I dated a girl once. Uh, she was still in high school. I was just out. And she was a field hockey player. And I literally broke up with her because I could not stand watching field hockey. And you felt pressed. Yeah, I couldn't stand watching field hockey. It's, 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 it's hard to watch. And no, I shouldn't say it's a bad sport. And the high school that I went to was very successful. And the head coach there has girls that played for the U.S. Women's oh, Olympic that team. Right? Yeah, Mr. Fatiz. Uh Yeah, he's had multiple. And he might have a girl in this Olympics right now. Uh, but yeah. Oh, there it is. There's the tower. They got one, two, three, four, five. Now they have five? Is there something behind? Four. They have four. All right, those guys will crush a tower. No problem at all. Our show's going for another 23 minutes. It's got to be done. Oh, there's the challenge, guys. Andrew says you can't finish that tower in 23 minutes. 23 minutes. Wow. Uh, he's looking at us like you guys can see it. This guy? Yeah, they, I think that guy alone could kill him in 23 <laughs> minutes. Yeah. So we got towers flowing here, lots of beer, lots of great, great food. It really is so much fun. I know you think we're overstating it, but Andrew and I just love being here. And we are fortunate enough that, that uh, Live Casino and Hotel is having us down here so we can do our beers with Bob. And we're going to be doing it for quite a while. Yeah. So that's the good thing. Let me ask you a speaking of the Olympics, man. Okay. And I don't even know how to call it. Do you have any interest as a pure, pure basketball man that you are in the three all three? So, I have a question. I've watched it from afar, not close, and I saw that the U.S. women won gold today. Yes. Are you pulling people off your regular roster or these specific three on three people? No, I think it's specific. Okay. Team USA is a three on three team. I don't even know who's on. Yeah, I saw the women's team today. I didn't recognize like any of them. Three on three. Yeah, that I thought that would be interesting. If you they would be pretty interesting. Uh, I haven't seen the men's three on three team at all. You might be able to look it up. Would I have interest in betting it? It's different. It's a uh, you know when we played three on three like that in half court sets growing up and so you would score and then you check the ball to the other team. That's not the way they play it. They play it that you score, the other team grabs the ball and can go right away. You just have to get it out beyond the three point line and your offense is ready to go. It's kind of fun to watch. I was watching somebody this morning on the morning show, we had it on and it looked like they had three like five five guys on because I guess rebounding isn't that big. I don't know. No, it's not. I, mean, I, was, I watched the highlight. It was when I found 
Yeah, there was I one highlight. There was an highlight. No, this is, this is from over the weekend. It's the first time I found out that there was three on three basketball. You could not know me right away. And I forget the two teams that were playing. Ah, and then there's just. Because they were guests, right? There's no, there's no timeouts, no substitutions. Team USA, here's your, here's your, your roster. It's four players. Yes. Robbie Hummel, who uh, played at Purdue. He's 32 years old. Okay. 32. You got a 32 year old on a three on three. Well, he doesn't have to move all that much, so that's a good that's a true. good thing. Yeah. Dominique Jones. Oh, Dominique. 33. Wow. Played at Fort Hayes State University. Oh, neat. He got it done at Fort Hayes. Joey King. Ooh. Sean, what's the nickname of Fort Hayes College? Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> Joey King. Joey. Six, six foot nine. Oh, uh, six nine. 20, you gotta have that big guy. Twenty seven year old out of University of Minnesota, and then uh, Kareem Maddox who played at Princeton at the age of thirty. Wow. So, so you got a passer in the Princeton guy. You have a rebounder in the six nine guy. And a six eight. Robbie Hummel six eight. Okay. Now, what was the name of the dude that went to what Fort Hayes State University? All right, Fort Hayes State University. That was Dominique Jones, five foot nine. Neek. Fort Hayes State University is in Hayes, Kansas. Do you know what their nickname is? Uh, wow, it looks like it looks like a tiger. Yeah, it might be. Yeah, this shouldn't be that hard, right? I just saw the. I got it. It is the Tigers, yes. Wow, good for you. Wow, they didn't go and all that hard. Tigers. It's a Division II okay. school. Wow. Now, if there were players like Kevin Durant and James Harden, would you be a little bit more? Wait, wait a second. Like, no offense to Mr. Fort Hayes State University and, oh, and stuff like that. You're the United States of America. You couldn't have gotten four better players for three on three. You're digging into Division Two. Yeah, that's Fort Hayes State. Now, are these guys making a name for themselves throughout the country as the best three on three? Like I played in a lot of three on three tournaments when I was younger, and you would try to get a good mix. You want a shooter, you want to pass you to the big guy. Like, is this the best that you had to say could have gotten? Look up now. You know, I gotta figure maybe if I'm gonna be a three on three coach, I gotta go scout out Fort Hayes State University. Dominic Jones won gold in the 2019 Pan American Games three on three. Ah, see, he's a veteran. Yeah, there's no coaching. Oh, there's no coaching. Sean's mouthing me something. I have no idea. What he's no All right, coaching. so there's no. Co so that's why you gotta get the Princeton kid. He's gotta be the coach. Oh, he played with the Harlem Globetrotters for a brief stint in 2015, where he got the nickname Disco Doma. Oh man, are you kidding? You have to have him on the team for nickname only. Exactly. And we're talking about Neek, right? Ah, yeah. oh, Neek is the man. Oh, probably Domino. Uh, disco Domino. Did I say something mean? Well, my wife just sent me a text that said that was mean. Well, you're saying that they could have gotten something better. Than no, it was it was before this. It was it was before the last break. Wow, I'm not generally a mean person, Andrew. I'm usually kind of nice. Well, what what time was it? Well, she sent the text at 6 so it was before the first break. Well, but we were in break, I think. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, it's six thirty-five. I think it's in short Oh, I might be staying tonight at Live Casino Hotel. It was the field house. Oh, that's my guess. By the way, I don't like when my wife gets disappointed. That broad bulletin. Oh yeah, okay. His record is uh, 14-3 right now. I don't know what, it's 14-3 here in the bottom. Five and a half beer towers, he says, is a lot. He's taking out the second mortgage to have. Really? Yes. Did he send the pictures of the beer towers? Somebody sent me a picture. Was it? That was Tyler. Oh, uh, it was Tyler in a text. So Tyler says, <laughs> three liters of beer. How much is it? Nearly a gift. So 102 ounces, 16. Yeah. Uh, what? Uh, I, I, no, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at six and a half. Right. I'm taking the under. Right. Sean, you have the over? Yeah. Okay. He also went five and a half because that was the initial line. Uh, the, the amount of 
amount of bets that came in pushed it up to six and a half. All right, we'll have to check check it out on FanDuel Sportsbook. It will probably be up by Friday because Andrew will be here with his friends at six o'clock. His three friends at six o'clock on Friday. So you know that'll be cool. And if you can't find it, you can find any baseball game that's currently happening. That's not the news because they're postponed for tomorrow. As soon as I find the line for tomorrow. Wait, what's postponed for tomorrow? Not postponed tomorrow. Sorry, they're postponed tonight to tomorrow. The way you said it, Sean, am I right? You said postpone tomorrow. I think that the NBA is still in the But I would imagine the Phillies will fail. All right, so here's a question for you, and I'm serious about this. Joe Girardi's been under a lot of scrutiny this year, and rightfully so. Uh, game planning, things that happen after games, behind a microphone, before games, whatever. What we said, Zach Wheeler, I would anticipate going pretty much a full game tomorrow, seven inning game. Do you throw him, it, it would seem obvious, oh, you pitch him in the first game. Do you? You go game two with him. Oh, I thought you meant to pitch him if you go seven and pitch the start of that. <laughs> Which game do you make Zach Wheeler your starter tomorrow? Is it the obvious, seemingly obvious answer of game one? Or do you let Vinny Velasquez go game one? Let your bullpen play it out however it may be. Maybe Vinny gives you five innings. Maybe you don't use your bullpen and you win a game, and then that way you can use Zach Wheeler the way you want in order to win a game. Like, what would you do tomorrow? Uh, would you go Wheeler game one or two? I'll go game one for Wheeler, A, because I'm a believer in getting the start, which is why coming out of the All Star break, I was pretty disappointed in Joe Girardi for not having a And I understood why. It was so that he was available for Braves history. I, under, I get it. But Bob, I am a believer of, hey, you were hot going in the All-Star break. You should remain hot coming out of the All-Star break. Now, they were lucky that they won the first game because of Matt Moore. But then Zach had to pitch for in game two. So it ended up working out. If Matt Moore pitched game two, they probably lost. Whatever. But all I know is I'm a guy that likes to get off the right note. So I'd rather start Zach Wheeler in game one tomorrow. Especially because if it's Velasquez, I'm going to start and you need to tax four guys that are in there. Now there's added pressure to Zach Wheeler. Exactly. Yeah. Each. Yeah. So I'd rather him pitch game one, have JT catch, force him to have to pitch game two, with Velasquez, plus the big one. Yeah. Have to catch four. And as I said before, when we were talking about pitching assignments, and somebody disagreed with me on the morning show saying, Stop, it's okay if you go game one with a, you know, a Vinny Velasquez or a Matt Moore. Then you can win the other three. The Phillies aren't in that position. You have to look to win every game that's in front of you. Therefore, I am going Zach Wheeler game one tomorrow. I am putting him out there because of the, of the weather conditions that may come in. You may only get one in tomorrow. If that's the case, you have to win that. Because also... If you do win that with Zach Wheeler and you don't have to get two and you don't have to use your bullpen, that's another day's rest for them. And you need to say, and they've pitched well lately. I, I put the number out there today. Over the last ten and the third inning over the last two games, five hits, one run. Yeah, and, and whether it's them pitching better or if it's Joe Girardi, I like to give them credit where credit is. Joe Girardi has been doing well in the last couple of games. Yes. Not his It's, saw, no, it's not his I fault. I saw a lot of people complain that Matt Moore was still out there. Then what are you going to do? Matt, so, Matt Moore pitched two innings. He gives up the six, had two decent innings after that. You know, then you got to creep in. Look, look, at some point you have to trust guys to get out. And, you know, Vinny Velasquez bitched about it the other night that he was taken out after 53 pitches. You know, I'm used to giving up six runs is basically what he That's said. That's not good. I still had, you know, my arm was still strong. I've, I've done this before. Oh, my God. Oh, that was... proud of that? I got to tell you, this week with the Phillies has frustrated me as, most, as much as any week. As much as I love the McCutcheon game, sat up for that. That was great. Good, you know, great comeback by them. I love Kutch. He's so much fun to watch. This team, with their on-field and off-field actions, and I'm leading the morning show tomorrow. John Kincaid is on uh, vacation. So me, Jamie Lynch, Pat Egan, and, and Coach Eric Camille holding down the court. I am leading tomorrow's show with this. 
and it is my frustration with the Philadelphia Phillies. And what in the hell are they doing? Not only, okay, the trade got messed up, all that. What is your game plan? Yeah, I'm I worried, have no idea. I'm worried that that was their answer, and then something obviously didn't go well. Uh-oh, what now, do we do now? Yeah, are they, are they just going to stand there and go, oh, Like, you couldn't have found a better option to trade? Yeah, I, exactly. It's a second-tier. Until tier, talks, but still, like, I go, It's a second-tier prospect. Yeah. You don't have another second-tier prospect that you could throw in there, or maybe two? And say, okay, sorry, you're not red flags on this guy's health. We'll throw in two other ones and let's get this done. Instead, they let it go. And Seattle, who is the only team in Major League Baseball that has a longer playoff draft than the Phillies, now scoops up Tyler Anderson. I kind of hope to God they make the push and make the playoffs so the Phillies are the longest tenured team out of the playoffs. Yeah, I don't know. Did you read that story? Yeah, I, yeah. It's, they are not happy with each No. Well, you know, teams like that shouldn't be. And you know what? John Kincaid has had this uh, tirade on our show over the last few weeks. And, you know, understandably so, that he doesn't need Bryce Harper to be GM of the team and calling for who to sign and what to do and telling Dom, uh, Dave Dombrowski what to do. Like using a Chris You know what? Bat. I'm kind of on it now I'm because I don't think man. anybody else in this organization, the organization knows what the hell No, I, I'm, I'm all for Bryce Harper. And guess what? He's swinging a hell of a, uh, of, a, of a bat now. He's nine for his last 23, hitting it almost a 400 clip. Inside the park home run last night. I would love to see his RBIs climb a little bit, but is that on Bryce Harper? No, that's not on Bryce Harper. I'm going to give you some numbers with him, but I do want to let you know about this. This is Harper. He's at that 170. They brought some jersey right now. It's out there. It's out there. It's out there. I saw a tweet uh, from last night. Now, this was after the inside the park home run. And then he ended up getting out a few times after. But Bryce Harper, after that inside the park home run, was the only qualified hitter in baseball for everybody that's saying he's having a down year. Other than Vlad Jr. All right, so it's just Bryce Harper and Vlad Jr. So 300 batting average because it climbed above 300. Yes, three hits on his way again. A 400 plus on base percentage and a 500 plus on Two players in the game, Bryce yeah. Harper and Vlad Jr. And I saw a tweet that, with those numbers that said if his RBI total was up, he'd be in consideration for MVP. I found that a little hard to believe. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, baseball's a numbers game, and you just do some out. No, and I wasn't saying that. I was just, I was just, I didn't know. Well, I'm not a mean, you know me, Andrew, as well as anybody to say, do I have a mean mode in my body? Anyway, we want to thank you for joining us with uh, Beers with Bob here at Live Casino and Hotel. Another great night here. We have a great, great crowd. For those of you that were planning on going to the Phillies game and couldn't make it because of the cancellation, come on down. Andrew and I are going to stick around for a little bit, say hi to some people, maybe grab a beer. Yes. All right, cool. We'll do that. First one today. Yes, first one today. We'll have some fun down here. We thank you so much. We ask you to join us tomorrow. Morning show, John Kincaid show, starting at 6 a.m. John is on vacation. So once again, me, Jamie Lynch, Pat Egan, Coach Eric Camille. Then, of course, Tunis and the Cuz, Anthony Gargano show, 10 to 2, and then Mike Missinelli afterwards. Thanks again for joining us. We will talk to you tomorrow. Bob Cooney, Andrew South, Tunis time at the Fanatic is 6.53. Now, Bob and I have talked about this incredible place that we're in right now, Live Casino at the top of time. Live Casino at Hotel Philadelphia. They have changed the game here in Philadelphia in the Stadium District. This is a world-class gaming destination with over 2,100 brand new slots. Over 150 total. They have a luxury hotel with five-star accommodations. They sold me on it so much that I'm actually going to be staying here this weekend, Friday and Saturday night, with a couple of buddies. My best friend's his bachelor party is this weekend. So we actually got two rooms here because this place is so awesome. The bar is fantastic. We're just talking about the beer tower. They look delicious. World-class restaurants. Whether you're looking for a fine dining experience with prime rib, or if you just want to experience the flavor of Guy Fieri's taco joint or his burger joint, it's all here. I'm sure I'll be experiencing all of it. Body. Truthfully, anywhere that offers a chance to place a bet with Fandle Sports for while enjoying a Kelly fraternity, also here on site in my casino, it's a winner in my book. Luxury hotels, games, bars, and restaurants in the heart of South Philly. To view upcoming events and promotions happening at Live Casino Hotel Philadelphia, visit livecasinophilly.com. Live Casino Hotel Philadelphia. Game on, game on, game on. See you, Tyler.
Thanks, Tyler. We're still, you know. Uh, make them laugh.